Hello friends, Pastor Chuck here, and I want to thank you for joining us today on the Wings of Healing podcast. We pray that our sermons, devotions, and testimonies are a blessing to you. Like, share, subscribe, and follow, and keep an eye out for future content. Today's message starts right now. Hello, hello, Wings of Healing family. This is, uh, once again, Pastor Chuck, uh, Chuck Holstinger, coming to you again at our weekly uh, podcast. Uh, we are excited here to be going into, uh, I think, maybe six or seven uh, different podcasts, and hopefully you've been enjoying, enjoying those. If you haven't uh, been... If you haven't had time to maybe check them all out, you can go back and you can uh, get those. They are available on our YouTube channel. They're, they are available on most of your podcasting apps, uh, Spotify, um, Apple, iHeartRadio, those kinds of things. And they should be up for at least three months or so, and uh, we'll see about how long those will be up after that. So today, I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but it is raining hard. It is raining really hard. It's thundering outside um, tonight at the church. And so I wanted to come on here real quickly, and uh, hopefully we don't lose power, lose electric or anything. Uh, if we do, we'll just get cut off. We'll try it again. But uh, I want to talk today, uh, this podcast is going to be titled The Battleground, The Battleground. And uh, I was reminded of a, a blog that I actually wrote on and posted on our website, uh, our uh, church website, that is, on uh, December 26th, 2019. So it was the day after Christmas. And obviously, if you're thinking about 2020 coming right around the corner there, just prior to... Uh, all the COVID and the pandemic and, and all this kind of stuff. So I was actually reading it. Was, it was kind of interesting what the Lord was speaking to us uh, to us there. So I want to kind of go through that for just a little bit, the battleground. And my scripture text is going to come from Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. Uh, if you haven't done so, please uh, subscribe to our podcast channel, like, follow the page, whatever it is, uh, how it works on your, whatever you're choosing to listen to, and uh, maybe take time to share it with someone else. We, we have Brother Josh and Brother Scott is going to be uh, doing uh, a podcast here in a, um, here in a couple weeks, so we're excited for that, and uh, I flinched a little, it just lightened really uh really uh, loud, I guess, thundered really loud, that is. Anyways, uh, so Isaiah 26 and 3 is our, oh, uh, I'm sorry, like I was saying, Brother Scott and Brother Josh are going to be coming together and doing a couple of podcasts for us here in the month of August. We're excited for that. So let's get on to today's podcast. I won't be long before you. This is called The Battleground, The Battleground. And Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. I heard something a few months ago that has kind of stuck in my head, and it's actually been a couple of years ago now, and I heard a quote that said something like this, Satan's target is your mind. His weapons are lies, so fill your mind with the word of God. 
I can tell you today that there, it, it is so important that we find time to read God's Word. It is so important to find time to put God's Word in your, in your mind and your heart yeah, and, and, and just make it a, a part of your, of your life. I, I, I can tell you that's one of the biggest things, the enemy, uh, that and prayer time. Uh, I know how the enemy fights us, our flesh fights us. But as, as, as somebody who, who's seen firsthand what, what God can do through his word, what God can do through, his, through, through prayer and fasting, and, and how things can be turned around, situations can be turned around, um, I can tell you it is very, very important. Satan's target is your mind. His weapons are lies. So fill your mind with the word of God. I find this to be partic this particular quote to be very accurate, especially in our world today. It is Satan's goal to feed our mind with his lies. He will strate strategically use the circumstances of our life and turn them around as opportunities to penetrate the mind. And one of the things we are seeing today so, so clearly is that how Satan tries to feed our mind with his lies. He tries to feed our, our young people's mind with his lies. Tries to feed you know, this world with his lies and, and, and gets people to believe something that, that is just you know, really just unbelievable. You know, it, it, it's kind of amazing to me how, 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 how quickly we can turn from the things of God's word when we allow Satan to penetrate our mind through his lies. How quickly we can turn our back on what we've been taught in the word of God. How quickly we can turn our back on what we've received in the house of God and what the ministry has preached and ministered to us, what we've been taught in Sunday school. How easily it is to get offended, get easily distracted by the lies that Satan puts in our mind. I have believed, and, and I'm kind of ashamed to even say it, but I have believed some of the most craziest things because I allowed the enemy to penetrate my mind. The battleground is in the mind. Sin, before it is committed, first starts out as a thought in our mind. Once that thought is acted upon and nourished, that's when it then it becomes an action. We just don't automatically think about something and automatically do it. Uh, most sin is, is, is something that's thought about. It's, it's pondered upon. It's, 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 you know, it goes back and forth for a, a, good, uh, a good bit there. Well, I, I know I'm not supposed to do this. And, and pretty soon we just, keep, we just keep feeding that, allowing the enemy to feed that in our mind. And, 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 and what, is, what, what is contrary to God's word, what is contrary to our faith, what is contrary to our morals, our beliefs, everything we've, we believe, everything we've been taught, then becomes something that we're, you know, we, 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 we begin to entertain the thought. We begin to entertain it. Once that thought is acted upon and nourished, then it becomes an action. While I don't want to give the enemy too much credit, one thing that we know from reading our Bible is that he is an expert of twisting the Word of God and taking advantage of the low times in our life. So many instances in the scripture where the enemy found people who are vulnerable. You know, found Eve, Adam, and Eve in the garden. Found, you know, found David, you know, when he was vulnerable. He was tired. He was weary. You know, found, found just various ones. Found Samson when, when he was vulnerable. He, was, he, he found himself, you know, being manipulated and found himself vulnerable by the enemy. And he literally laid his, 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 his neck in, in Delilah's lap. And, and the enemy is, a, is an expert at twisting the word of God. He tried it with Jesus, tried to take you know, the scriptures and twist them to fit his agenda. He's doing the same thing today, trying to twist the word of God. Well, you don't have to go to church. You don't have to read your Bible. You really don't have to do this. God understands. But that's not what the scripture says. 
And, and, and so one of the things that, that I think that we need to really begin to focus on is what does the Scripture really say? The only way we're going to know that is by reading our Bible, studying the Word of God, coming to Bible study, coming to Sunday school, coming to church where there's anointed preaching. You know, all those things help enrich our spiritual lives so that we're able to, you know, sustain ourselves when the enemy comes in like a flood, when the enemy comes and tries to penetrate our minds and our hearts in, in the moments when we're vulnerable and tries to take advantage of our low times. The real battle is within our minds. That is where the enemy does his best work. Once he is able to penetrate our mind, he continues to use his weapons of fear and doubt to keep us second-guessing the promises of God. Suddenly, things that we believed no longer seems believable and faith becomes fear. It was interesting, God spoke that to us uh, back in 2019, just at the turn of coming into 2020 maybe as i begin to look back at this at this blog here on the website and it's right there you can go to it yourself it's called the battleground it it's and i'll put a link to it in in the description of this podcast it's interesting how that god was even then prior to to all this stuff happening in 2020 all this stuff going on through throughout 2020 and 2021 all this fear 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 even right then here we find this god was already speaking to us trying to prepare us for what was ahead god knows what's ahead of us nothing catches him by surprise it may catch us off guard but it doesn't catch god off guard we begin to, to second guess the promises of God. I don't know about you, but these last couple of months has been, has been a trying time. I, I'll just be honest, it's been a trying time for me and my wife and our, our family. Uh, we're, we're just going through some things, and, and, and it's, just, it's just been a, a trying time. And I don't, I don't care to admit to, you know, most of you are a church family or extended church family. Um, and I desire your prayers. Our, our family needs your prayer. Our children need your prayer. My wife and I need your prayer. And, and we desire that. And we thank God for it. We know you're praying for us. We appreciate you, know, you standing with us. But it's been a trying time. And I know for many of us, we've had many conversations this summer already with many families in the church that are just going through situation after situation after situation. And just about the time you think, man, is this ever going to let up? You know, it just sometimes it just seems to really just get worse. That's the way the enemy does. He just keeps pouring it on, pouring it on, pouring it on. But we've got the promises of God. It's when we allow him to penetrate our mind that he continues to use his forceful weapons of fear and doubt to keep us second-guessing the promises of God, keep us second-guessing things that we already know deep down in our heart God is going to take care of. We already know deep down in our heart God is going to make a way. We already know down deep in our heart that God is going to fix it. He is able to do it according to his word. But yet we still find ourselves in that, in that constraint of second guessing, that chains, bondage, fear, that, and, and, and our faith becomes fear. So what can we do? It is important to understand that living for God will not come without some resistance in our flesh, the world, and the devil. I want you to understand today that just because you live for God, that doesn't mean we're not going to have to deal with some resistance in the flesh, in our flesh, in our world. Jesus said you're in the world, but you're not of the world, right? Right? And then resistance from the devil, the enemy of our soul. The Bible says he's the accuser of the brethren. Think it not strange, one scripture says, you know, when, when we suffer from the fiery trials of the enemy. Think it not strange 
those fiery darts the enemy fires at us. Don't, don't look at it as some strange thing happened to us. We are a target of the enemy. Each of us, you and I, our families are a target of the enemy. However, with the Spirit of God, we have the advantage when we fill our minds with God's Word. Can I get an amen there? We have the advantage when we fill our minds with God's Word. It's been said time and time again, you know, prepare, uh, pre prepare. we, we got to make preparation. We got to make preparation. I've been watching the Olympics, and I love to watch uh, many of the the competitions where there's a. I told, told someone the other day. I said I like the ones where there's a score, there's a winner, there's a winner, there's a loser, there's a race, there's a finish line, there's something that that I can see. Okay, that one won the race, that one won the match, that one won the game. I like that. I, I don't care much for those ones that you know are up to a judge. You know, to judge them because, to be honest, they all look good to me, and I don't, I don't know the techniques of what they're doing. But I've been watching the Olympics here the last couple of weeks, and and just every chance I get, I watch some of the activities, some of the sports, some of the the swimming, different things like that. And and one of the things that you can clearly see is, is that that they they have all trained, they have all trained. They have all spent hours and hours and hours doing, you know, their skill. They've spent all that time. But when push comes to shove and they're out there, I, I kept hearing someone, one of the announcers say, you've just got to trust your training. you got to trust your training. Well, church, I'm going to tell you, we might be going through a battle right now. We might be going through a hard time. Maybe our families are suffering right now. Maybe there's some issues going on within our, our job, within our work, within even our own self. But I can tell you what we can do. We can trust God's Word. We can trust God's Word. Someone told me here a while back, trust the seed. Trust the seed. Parents, if your children aren't serving God, trust the seed. And I'm looking right in the mirror when I'm saying that. Trust the seed. Trust what we've planted in them is going to take root. Trust what we've put within them, what we've taught, what we've preached, what they've seen us live. It, it is going to penetrate their heart, and, and they're going to come back to, to, the, to the God that's called them before they were formed in the belly. Trust the seed. Trust the Word of God. It is amazing to me how many people who profess to be believers do not read and study the Word of God. I find it somewhat amazing, and, and I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I find it somewhat you know, intriguing how, how sometimes the first thing to go, in, in, even in my life, as I go through my day, is I look back and I thought, have I read the Word of God today? It's just a trick of the enemy. It's a trick of the flesh. And, and we're going to have to overcome those things and make sure we are allowing time for God's Word in our life. Let me tell you something. Failure is absolutely inevitable if God's Word is not consistently a part of our life. I'm going to say that again. Failure is absolutely inevitable. It is. It is a sure thing if God's Word is not consistently a part of our life. Going to church, reading the Bible, attending Bible studies, praying over God's Word will help keep our mind full of God's Word. It will help keep our mind full of the promises of God. We need all those things. I'm going to tell you, now's not the time to quit going to church. Now's not the time to slack off. Hear me today. Hear me today. Hear this pastor from the bottom of his heart. Now is not the time to slack off from attending the house of God. It's a trick of the enemy. Every time we miss, every time we stay out, every time we miss a good sermon, Every time we miss a, the Holy Ghost moving in the, in the house of God, every time we, we don't get and, and we don't receive it through, 
through, through the various means in which we can receive it. Every time we don't allow ourselves to come together in, 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 the, uh, in the house of God, every time we don't allow ourselves to, to come and fellowship with believers, we are getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. Hear me today. There is no better way to know the mind of God and keep, and keep your mind on God than through His Word, through the preaching of His Word, through the teaching of His Word, through the reading of God's Word, through coming together, discussing Bible verses and coming to small groups and coming to Sunday school. There is no better way. Well, Pastor, that's all you ever talk about is come to church, come to church, come to church. I'm going to tell you, it, I, I believe it, it is the, one of the most single important things you'll ever do for you and your family is to get involved in a church somewhere. I, I'm not saying it's the only thing, but I'm saying this. Getting involved in a good church somewhere where, where they're teaching the Word of God will enable you, it'll encourage you to do all the other things that you need to do. Praying, fasting, reading your Bible, studying the Word of God, worship, praise. All those things take place right inside the house of God. Service after service after service. It is so important. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Isaiah 26 and 3. God bless you today. Thank you once again for joining me on this podcast called The Battleground. I, I really pray that it touches your, your heart. I, I really pray it 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 I really pray it 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 encourages you to step up because the enemy's out to steal, kill, and destroy. He's out to get you. He's out to get your family. He's out to get you. He's out to get your soul. And I'm telling you today. He will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Isaiah 26 and 3. God bless you. We will uh, see you. Uh, we'll be back next week um, for another midweek podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. Like, share, subscribe, follow. Do all those things. Help us get the word out. That's another opportunity to just teach the word of God to you. God bless you. This is Pastor Chuck signing off. God bless you. I'll see you this weekend.